All right, let's go around the panel real quick. Uh, Mike Horton, project creator of the GeoNet network. GeoNet is a uh, large, hyper-precise location network, actually the largest hyper-precise location network in the world. We do things like position drones, uh, farm tractors, survey equipment, um, robotics applications using an augmentation to GPS called RTK. So that's our story. What do you think is the difference between, and I'll open it up to any of you guys, between an IoT deployment of you know, a GeoNet of sorts or any other application out there, any network, um, what makes or break a IoT project when deploying it and sending it out to the community? Well, I think um, tokenomics are super important and aligning the tokenomics to uh, the network growth and the demand growth of the network so that you can balance supply and demand. And this has got a lot of corollaries and uh, corollaries in web too. If you were to think about Airbnb, if all of a sudden there were um, you know millions of hosts for an Airbnb in a city, but no tourists came to the place, it would not it would not be a working system. So you have to grow supply and demand simultaneously. And I think sometimes we get so excited in the web three space that we can go all out on supply and not get the demand. Or there can be an idea that's super great that would have tremendous demand, but there's just actually no practical way to build the supply with Deepin. So that all comes back to um, you know, really understanding the markets well, but also modeling out the tokenomics carefully up front and making sure that the, the system is going to balance and work in a reasonable period of time. Um, here is a question that I hope you all disagree with one another in. Is IoT uh, mainly used in organizations and in different industries, or is it a consumer-facing product? Well, I, I think that, uh, first of all, I don't think we should call it IoT anymore. Most of these devices are very sophisticated, so think of them as AI devices, or AI IoT devices, whether that's a drone or a robotic lawnmower or your refrigerator now. These things are very packed with sensors and compute. So. I think when I think of IoT, I always think of like the original ring doorbell, very simple things. That's not the world we live in anymore. These are very sophisticated, highly connected platforms. And that's why they work so well in a deepen, because you can use those devices to train and build higher and higher levels where there's a, a large language model or a large geospatial model or whatever it is. They're, they're incredible uh, conduits into the AI world. So I think that's um, one key point to keep in mind. You know. Apple go from nothing to a powerhouse. And it started with them focusing on kids and education. I don't see a lot of that in Web3 right now. I don't see deep end devices being deployed in schools. I don't see a lot of deep end devices being handed to kids saying, hey, go play with this, go explore this. Why do you think that that is? Are we like too early still? Like, what's the problem that we're not focusing on that? Don't you remember that Web3 and crypto is only used to finance terrorism and blackmail and all that? I mean, that's the real problem. And we've seen a lot of improvement. When I started out GeoNet, I'd go to conferences and people be like, oh, we love this idea of decentralizing RTK base stations. But can't you find some way, Mike, to do it without crypto? And I'm like, no, really, you need a way to transfer value. You really need a way to send micropayments. And really, these rails work. And it's really the right way to incentivize people to be long-term participants in the network. And like, OK, 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 fine, fine. Two or so years later, it was like, well, that's a good use case of crypto. So we're OK with it. We'll buy your product. We like it. And now, finally, I think it's coming around to people are accepting, yeah, this stuff is here to stay. And I do think the, the current you know, administration is going to help with that a lot. Even though I have maybe mixed feelings about the Trump coin, I do think it's largely super helpful. Um, and people aren't really questioning it anymore. And I think you have to get to that to get it to kids, because people are very obviously hypersensitive about what gets introduced to, to kids, and there's still this sort of ridiculous stigma that shouldn't be there uh, around Web3, but there's still a little bit of that, and it's super frustrating. It's one of the, I think, I find personally one of the very most frustrating things to deal with is when I'm at a Web2 conference talking about GeoNet, and people give me the look like when, I, when, when it does come up, which usually it doesn't, but when it does come up that there's a crypto element in our business model, that people look at you with this sort of like, like, woo, you're some kind of you know criminal. And I'm like, no, no, this is really a good way to solve these problems. It's a very efficient way. We're saving a ton of money. We'll be able to do things faster. But that's, I think, the real root cause. Geonet. Mind the sky.